and social security. Thank you, sir. Thank you. See KJ Alphans. See KJ Alphans. Respected Chairman, sir, I rise to support uh, Rakesh Nasji's bill, the Population Regulation Bill 2019. I was extremely happy to listen to Mr. Jairam Ramesh, who made some extremely valid points of what India has done. And I think a lot of credit really goes to, goes to the earlier government, starting with uh, our former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had really pioneered the work in this area and had done excellent work in this. And of course, what we have achieved today, obviously, is a result of work of many governments, including this government. Uh, but we have serious issues, sir. Mr. Jairam Ramesh, uh, Jairam ji, uh, Ramesh ji, can I have your attention, please? Can I have your attention? You spoke about our replacement level being reached. And by 2040, we having an aging population above 60 or 16 percent. But uh, according to the literature I have read, by 2050, by sorry, by 2040, we're going to add about 237 million people to India's population. I, I would stand corrected if somebody can uh, rectify me, correct me. But this is what I have read. 237 million people are going to be added by 2040. So by 2027, India is going to have the largest population in the world overtaking China. We talk about the demographic dividend. If you really look at the lot of our younger people, in spite of the efforts by various governments, including a terrific about, uh, effort by this government. So is it really a demographic dividend or is it a demographic curse? We need to ask ourselves. So in spite of the government trying to do great things, various governments, I'm not saying just this government. So is it possible to educate everybody, provide them the kind of education that we have, with the kind of resources we have, Number one, is it possible in spite of being the largest growing economy in the world, is it still, still possible to skill everybody and to provide a job for everybody in this country? Sir, I think it is asking far too much from the government, even if it's the most efficient government, they would not be able to do it. We need to bring down the population dramatically, if my numbers are correct, we cannot afford to add one number to our population. Forget about the 237 million I'm talking about. So, let me talk about success stories. So, as per the Nidhi Ayog's latest publication, there is one district in this country, sir, which, has got, which is zero poverty, and that happens to be Kottayam district in Kerala. So, I come from there. My wife comes from there. I was a district collector there. I'm not saying this happened because I was a district collector. No. Historic, historically, historically, things have happened, and Kottayam today is the only zero poverty district in this, in this entire country. So, how did Kottayam achieve this? Why did Kottayam achieve this? Is because of education. Two, three things. Sir, so, number one, education that has been provided. Number two, that's a health care that has been provided. Number three, sir, and I would say it's the most important thing, the ability of people of various religions to think beyond religion and say family planning is an economic decision-making activity and not a religious decision-making activity. I focus on that again. So when I was a district collector for, for almost four years, for three years, Kottayam won the district for best family planning practices. So this house would be shocked to know that Kottayam is the most Christian district in the entire country, barring the Northeast. And say so the Christian churches, especially if you take my church, the Catholic church, bans any form of family planning, any form, including the use of condoms. So how come a district 
which is the most Christian district in this entire country, barring the Northeast. How come that district has been the most successful in implementation of family planning? Question, I think the, this house, house has the right to know. So very simple. Number one, people who are educated, Kotaim, is the first 100% literate town in this country. In 1989, Kotaim became the first 100% literate town in this country. And Kotaim has the highest literacy for any district in this country. And therefore, sir, so, and therefore, sir, literacy played a very key role in ensuring that people are able to think rationally and think what is good for themselves. So, secondly, the healthcare facilities that has been provided. Sir, it is fine to establish All India Institute of Sciences. I think this government has done a fantastic job. From six All India Institutes, it's gone up to 22. I think it's a fantastic achievement. We have increased the number of medical colleges dramatically. In fact, the number of seats in medical colleges have gone up by 60 percent from 90,000 to 148,000 in the past seven years. Fantastic achievement. But I think the key to family planning success and healthcare is the success of your primary health centers in the, in the villages, in the panjais. So this is one area which we cannot say, sorry, the private sector will take care. Sorry, no, the private sector will not take care. And the government is aware of this. And this government has put in lots of money into the government sector to ensure that the public, the government, medical system works. And I think, sir, this is a key. And Kotem has been very successful. Kerala and South Indian states, I think Tamunan is a great example of how they have taken care of the girl child. I think more than Kerala, because Kerala traditionally achieved, if you look at the success of Tamil Nadu, what they have achieved in the past 25 years, I think is fantastic. I think we just need to write home about it, especially for the girl child. And therefore, what the government does in terms of affirmative action, in terms of medical facilities right available in the village, so for a poor family to go and say, you will go and have your child delivered in an all India institute or a medical college doesn't work. If it happens in the neighborhood hospital, in the primary health center, sir, that happens. And therefore, sir, even though I've been a votary or the private sector in a lot of areas, I strongly assert that government needs to be deeply involved with the health sector right up to the village level, set to the medical facilities. Set to the medical facilities. We cannot pass this on to the private sector and say they will take care. No. Let them do. Let them do whatever they want. Let them do whatever they want, what they can. Let them add hospitals. Bad. Good. Let those who have money. Let those who have money go there, sir. But for those people who can't afford, it's a government hospitals have to work. And it has worked. And therefore, it has succeeded in Kerala and South Indian states. Sir, the most important factor. Here is where I will have some disagreement with people. So I mentioned about the diktat of the Pope of the Catholic Church that you shall not have any kind of formally family planning practices practice in, in, the, in the Catholic Church. So in spite of that, every Christian family in Kerala has adopted family planning. Sir, this is the wisdom of people. Their ability to say family planning is a decision-making activity and your religion is completely a different, uh, different, uh, let's say, uh, 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 area to be dealt with. Sir, unfortunately, sir, this is not the case with some communities. This is not a case. This is not a case. Sir, take for example, not long ago, Mr. Wahab might know better. He's been in this house for a long time. The Christian community and the Muslim community were almost equal percentage, about 20%. Mr. Wahaba can correct me exact numbers if you want to. Many years back, not far long back, the percentage of Christians and Muslims in Kerala was almost equal. Today, the percentage of Christians have come down to 17.5% and the percentage of Muslims have gone up to 20, 26%. No. No, you can't correct me if my data is wrong. Please, please. If my basic information is wrong, sir. Sir, it's gone up to 26%, sir. This is where, this is where a religious dictator cannot decide about the individual family planning practices of an individual or a family. Sir, 
for that to happen we must educate our people that is extremely important why is a christian community able to accept family planning because christians have traditionally accept education much more than many other communities and muslim community especially so important that they educate their women their children and in kerala the muslim education society has done a fantastic job now they are catching up very very well we are extremely happy extremely happy but sir we must be able to segregate into silos these decisions and it should not be a religious decision making activity at all the way the christians in kerala have decided that we shall decide our family decisions based on the economic considerations and not based on the religious dictate of anybody i think this is a huge lesson to be learned learn from the kerala experience wahab if you can go and tell your people good if you don't want to tell well it's your choice that's that 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 is so that is a choice i'm telling from experiences from numbers exactly what is happened and then if you want to adopt these good practices which some communities have adopted so it's good enough sir so india needs to control its population it needs to bring it down we cannot afford to have more than two children sir in my house say in my house i have people staying in my house my rule number 2 rule number 238 is rule is creative wedge between different sections of society which are 238 sir he is creating an animosity among Sabrul. different sectors no, no. please mention 238 sir who that is sabrul sabrul sir how can you accept sabrul sabrul whatever sabrul, sabrul. He, he said he said no, no. he has not sought your assistance sir 238 no no sir 238 he is sub close 3 he has been creating animosity said, among oh, different sections said, your people how can you accuse an honorable member your people are your people are Ab abetting right, population down, growth. Down, How down, can mean, he see that? Records, he has to withdraw. All right. And he is becoming no, no, a Christian down. preacher. Please sit down. Records will be verified. Records will be verified. Sir, please continue. Sir, in my words, in my thoughts, I have not said anything of that sort. I am just telling my very close friend, whom I admire a lot. If there are lessons to be learned from what India has gone through, states have gone through. successfully they could think about it that's all what i said i am not even saying your community no no yes. no side comments no please oh, please uh, address the chair yes, but no, mr alfonso mr alfonso let's tell mr alfonso let, let's tell our people at large mr. i said correct i said correct completely correct thank you so much sir sir we need we need to have practices we need to have practices adopted practices i completely agree with mr rakesh sinha ji we can do everything that modi government is doing but if the people of india don't take responsibility to control themselves sir unless they are part of this entire government suffer to say sorry we are going to be responsible we are not going to be a burden on the government we need to control population sir say in my house i see it every day sir my gardener my one of the people who work in my house is got five children sir he is unemployed sir i see tension we buy medicine for blood pressure for sugar for everything because he is unemployed he's got five children sir another person who works in my house sir he's got four children this and i have a husband has got a child who is who is epileptic so how can people in this country who can't even afford a meal a day sir have five children four children three children sir we just need to have a regulation i don't know if it's going to be a self regulated thing a government regulated thing i don't really know or it's a question of a psychological regulation so we need to ensure that in this country people behave responsibility and that responsibility to the country and to the government i think the first responsibility is to ensure that we that we do not that thank we do you. not produce children whom the country cannot look after thank you very much sir thank you